today, ladies, we're gonna learn to make our own kombucha. Mine is totally carbonated and totally exploding here in my hands. Mm. I'm gonna show you how to make your own scoby. I'm gonna show you how to continue making kombucha once you have a scoby, and then I will show you how to flavor all in this video. Stick around. Mm. Wow, this is really good. Welcome back ladies, my name is Tabitha. If you haven't been here before, I'm here to help all you busy ladies juggling jobs, careers, kiddos, with no real time to exercise. I'm gonna give you exercise tips, tricks, routines, and even product reviews to help make fitness a part of your life, but a little spin in things. Along with fitness comes healthy and clean eating. So today we are going to make kombucha together, yes. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified every time I post a new video. So, we are gonna do this video in three parts. The first part is going to be how to brew your own kombucha and create your own scoby from scratch. Now, let me show you what the scoby is. Wash my hands really well. Kombucha and create your own scoby. So number one, we're gonna learn how to make our own symbiotic culture of organisms and bacteria, and this is my lovely SCOBY here in this jar. Part number two is we are gonna take this already brewed batch of your first batch of um, kombucha. Say you're growing your own SCOBY. Part two will be how to brew another batch once you have a SCOBY. And part three will be how to flavor your kombucha. So down below, you will see the chapters of the video. So if you've already built a SCOBY or you know, and you're in the flavoring stage, go ahead and click down below and you can get sped up to that part where I cover the next topic. Now, in order to brew your own SCOBY, you're gonna need a couple things. One, you're going to need a jar. This is a gallon size jar. I'm gonna use up this, I'm gonna wash this jar really well. We're gonna label it together to brew our own SCOBY. You're going to need some loose, either loose leaf black tea or green tea, or you can do the tea bags. So I did use tea bags at first because I had a bunch that I did I needed to use up, but then now I just buy the loose tea, which is extremely cheap. I can make a ton of batches of kombucha out of this bag here, and this total bag of tea cost me $5. You are going to need a raw, it says, um, so raw kombucha, it's an original unflavored batch of kombucha. Now, you can find this in the stores. I am not sure where you're gonna find that locally near you. I found it at our health food store. A lot of the times the stores will carry the flavored ones and not this one. So just be on the lookout. You need an unflavored batch and you want it to have at the bottom, if you can see here, you want it to have mother in it. You want it to be alive. You don't want one of those weird ones where you can't tell. So I've been going with this brand, GTS Energy Raw Kombucha Original, okay? Organic, unpasteurized. It's gotta be alive, so look for this one. And finally, you need some sugar. So this is raw, uh, organic cane sugar, nothing special to it, but that's all you need. And let's get started. All right, this is so exciting. You are going to create your very own SCOBY from scratch. Now, if you have a friend that already makes kombucha, ask them for a SCOBY, because guarantee they have extras. Now, if you don't have a friend that makes um, kombucha and you want to buy one, you can do that as well. They're just very pricey. When you can go to the store, Grab one of these guys for two to three to four dollars, depending on where you're at, and make your own from scratch. It just takes a bottle of this, some sugar, some black tea water, and about seven to 14 days. I like to let mine rest for 10, it's a good in between, but it is up to you and how much you want to let it grow. So let's get started. I have my pot on the stove here and I'm gonna fill it with four cups of water.
and four. Now, we are gonna bring this to a boil. If you want to go ahead and use tea bags, you can very well use tea bags. Black or green tea is just fine. I buy the loose leaf tea, so you could also do loose leaf tea. If you're doing three um, tea bags, you want to have three tea bags in your brew. For the loose leaf tea, one tablespoon will do. So I'm just throw that one tablespoon in there. Once our water gets to a boil, then we will be adding a third of a cup of raw sugar. I like to do the raw organic sugar. It again is up to you. Plain white sugar will work just fine as well. So it's almost there, almost to a boil. I'm gonna put it in my raw sugar now. And make sure that this is completely dissolved. Super easy process. You don't need to have your tea come to a full boil either, as long as it's hot and it's brewing. It's just brewed sweet tea, so you really can't mess this part up. So I just like to shake it around here, make sure it's really incorporated, and then we're gonna leave this on the counter to cool. In the meantime, make sure you find your glass jar that you're gonna make your kombucha in. Give it a really good wash, soap and water. And then what I'm doing here is I am boiling some hot water on the stove. That's hot enough. And I'm gonna give it a pour and another rinse on the inside to make sure it's really disinfected because you don't want any other bacteria growing in your kombucha. You just want the natural yeast that comes from this guy, right? So I'm gonna give it a quick little rinse here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just strain off my brewed tea. It's still really hot, but I'm gonna um, strain it off into a glass Pyrex jar. And the reason for that, it's just gonna cool a lot faster here on the counter in this glass jar. and I'm gonna scoop the rest of those tea leaves and I'm gonna make them sit in my little strainer here. That way, they can still steep in the water as it cools. So I'm gonna just leave this here, let it steep and um, cool all at the same time. There we go. The tea bags settle right at the bottom anyways, so that'll be a nice easy process. I'll see you back in a few minutes once this is all cooled. It finally is chilled. I put it in the refrigerator to get cooled, so I'm just gonna strain off my tea. Dump this in the trash really quick. And then we'll strain again because I think I see little tea leaves in here. So we're gonna just take our brewed sweet tea and put it into our jar that we are creating our SCOBY in. Voila, just like that. So now you need your lovely jar of, again, organic, unpasteurized, original, non-flavored kombucha. Just gonna open this whole thing up. You need two cups basically of raw kombucha. If you have a friend again that does their own kombucha, they could give you a SCOBY or they could give you two cups of raw kombucha or you could buy some. Woo -woo. 
the piss. I want to make sure I get all the goodness at the bottom. Pour that right in there. Now grab a cloth, a cheesecloth, a cover of some sort, something that has is porous so air can come through. Some people make little fabric shower cap sort of thing. I haven't gone that far yet. I probably should. It would make it a little easier and cuter with a little shower cap bonnet. But I just use a little dishcloth and some rubber bands. Make sure you have some good ones because I have had little fruit flies sneak into one batch so far. So I'm going to put two rubber bands. Those little sneaky guys, you definitely have to throw that batch out. So this here, I will show you guys some video. I'll add it in as the week and two weeks go by. Again, you can keep this in a cool, dark place for 14 days, even longer if you like, or if you don't have time to flavor your kombucha, but the SCOBY will slowly start forming, as you can see here. Once you create your SCOBY and you're ready to flavor, you can head to that part of the video, part three, Part two will be using your SCOBY that you already brewed from this batch here to create a new batch of kombucha. So, continue on. This is a one gallon jar. This is the jar I'm gonna be using to make all my kombuchas. I actually use both jars, but for you, I highly recommend getting the one gallon if you can, unlike Hawaii, where sometimes you can't find things, I'm sure, in the States, you'll have a better time than me. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one cup of water here. And then we're gonna just go ahead and take a permanent marker and I'm gonna mark off the one cup mark. right on it, one cup. I'm gonna also do this on the other side. Sometimes it's nice to see it from two angles. Oh. All right, there we go. I have my jar marked. So I'm gonna disinfect this jar really quickly. I've got some hot water, I'm gonna run it through. Just make sure you disinfect your things because you don't want any other bacteria growing in your SCOBY. That would be really bad, I've never had that happen. But just in case, you can never be too sure. So what I have prepped here is my big pot that I'm gonna start brewing my tea in. I've got my loose leaf tea. A measuring cup, we're gonna do three quarters of a cup of raw sugar. And two tablespoons of loose tea. So let me bring you closer. In here, I have six cups of water. I'm going to brew half with sweet tea and then once I take it off the heat, I will add the other six cups of water to this mixture to help bring it down to room temperature faster than if I brewed 12 cups of tea directly. So I'm gonna set this on high. You can add in one to two tablespoons or you can add in three to five tea bags. So I do two tablespoons because I like to have that tea flavor in there. All right, now that the water is come up, we're gonna add our three quarters of a cup of sugar. Mix that in really, really well. Now I'm gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna set it to the side to cool. This 
So at this point, you have now six cups of brewed tea. We need 12 cups to make the three quarters of a gallon to fill our jar to make our next batch of kombucha. So what I like to do is I bring it off and then I take my measuring cup again. Now remember at this point, you're just making sweet tea. So however you wanna cool this faster, it really isn't gonna hurt the sweet tea. I'm a mom, I'm busy, I don't have all day to wait for my tea to cool with the air. So I like to speed the process up. I'm gonna add some ice cubes and I'm gonna measure out six more cups of water and cool this bad boy down. So here's what I like to do. I just add a little bit of ice, then I fill with water so that it makes the cup mark. My other one is uh, missing at the moment, so I'm using my one cup. So there we go, one. And six, there we go. Six cups of water with ice. So I am going to Stir this, it's coming down nice and fast. And now I use loose leaf tea, but if you wanna save time and energy, go ahead and buy some tea bags. That way you don't actually have to strain out the loose leaf tea like I'm going to have to. So that is completely up to you which route you choose. I just find it better to buy the loose leaf um, because I know it's just tea and it's really hard like I said, Hawaii, I have to go to a million different places to buy stuff and I can find the loose leaf tea easy versus a good sustainable tea bag pack that's not like um, plastic, you know those plastic meshes they put around the tea bags now. So that's the reason why I choose the loose, loose leaf tea here, but whatever is easier for you, the tea bags, you just squeeze and take them out. So now I'm gonna strain. I'm gonna use my jar to strain really quick. Yep, it is nice and cool. Actually, bad idea. I totally see me screwing that up for the camera right now. And it just, I'm clumsy, so let me be safer. Here we go. Most of my tea is right here at the bottom of my pot, so that was fairly easy. It usually is pretty easy. Okay. I'm gonna squeeze out the rest of this tea. Make sure we get all the good stuff out of it. I'm gonna rinse it and put it back in my pot just so it's easier to fill my jar. Now, the reason you want the one cup measurement on the bottom of your glass jar is you're gonna put your pre-brewed kombucha up into the one cup line. Now, normally when I have a batch of pre kombucha, I just put this, take the scoby out, move it to the side, and then what I'll do is I'll use up my kombucha as I flavor it and then leave a little bit at the bottom. Now, if you already have it measured, the one cup measurement at the bottom, you don't need to measure to make sure you have one cup left because there have been times where I'm making kombucha and I'm like, oh no, I don't think, or I'm flavoring kombucha and I'm like, I don't think I have enough in my jar and I've had to measure it out. So this just saves you one more step in having to measure. So we are going to take some out of this brewed jar here and we're gonna fill it into our gallon jar. Okay. 
there is my one cup of already brewed kombucha. Now, this scoby in this jar, I'm gonna use it for this recipe as well. And the rest of this jar here, I am going to flavor for you guys next, coming up. So, first thing we're going to do though, is we are going to get all of this kombucha into this jar. Yep, temperature's good, I'll have to check it again, just in case. And then actually what I'm gonna do, because normally I leave, I use the bottom of the jar, like I said, once I get to the bottom and I'm flavoring, I'm gonna take all that mother that's at the bottom and I'm gonna pour it back in this jar just so it has a lot more goodness in there. I feel like I'm gonna mess this up, but let's have hope and pray for me. All right, like I said, ladies, I am super messy, I'm super clumsy, so if I spill, it's just the way it is. I'm not perfect. Far from it, actually. Okay, here we go. From it, actually. A little bit of spill, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, I'm going to take the SCOBY from here, and I'll put it right on top. Look at that beauty. Every batch you make, every batch of kombucha you make, you will get um, a new SCOBY that forms. So another SCOBY will kind of form on the bottom of this, um, or on the top of this old SCOBY. So it's kind of neat how that happens. We're gonna cover this up. I just use a towel and a rubber band. You can use other mechanisms. Just be really careful. Make sure your rubber band's really strong. I have had fruit flies get into my kombucha once and it's not fun. So um, just make sure that you cover it up good and yeah, you keep it safe. <laughs> so let's move on to flavoring. So now we're getting ready to do the fun part, which is flavor our kombucha. Now, I've tried all sorts of things. I've mashed up fruit. I've um, added just fruit juice, frozen fruit. I've done all sorts of things. You can flavor kombucha in almost any way, and it, I really haven't had a bad batch. Now, I have noticed that some kombuchas ferment better and will get a little bit more carbonation than others, so I notice that if I add a little bit of raw sugar to the bottom of my jar, I will get a better ferment. Sometimes the juices or fruits you put in might not have enough sugar for the yeast to eat up and build those bubbles so that you have a nice carbonated beverage. Now, first off, I've got these jars. I got this one at Target. You can find them at Marshall's, TJ Maxx, but I will link down below where you can get some of these jars um, if you don't have them in your area. Also, what I do is after I'm done with a jar, I of course clean them out with soap and water, but right before I do my kombucha, I like to clean them with a good boiling water, rinse them out really quick just to disinfect them. You can never be too sure. So my husband loves the pineapple ginger mixture. It was his little idea to do pineapple ginger and he loves it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use the rest of our ferment here in this jar. And we are probably gonna fill two of these. If I need to fill more, then um, nope, I won't. If I have extra, I'm just gonna be pouring in my batch that I just made. I'm just gonna pour the extra in there. It's not gonna hurt a thing. So I like to chop up my ginger into nice chunks. The reason for that is I've grated it before, and when I grate it, it gets stuck in the bottle, and it makes it much harder to clean. But let me show you one thing that I actually did find online that is very useful. So I have a set of these. I will link these below as well. This is from Amazon. It was cheap. 
but this helps so much to clean the bottles. Definitely a must have if you're doing kombucha, especially in these type of jars. If you have a wide lid mason jar and that's the way you're doing it, then you may not need a scrub brush, but I like to get into those crevices and I found these brushes to the, be the best option. Again, that will be linked down below. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my ginger, my pineapple juice. So I just buy frozen pineapple juice. You could do other routes. You could make pineapple juice yourself with pineapple chunks in it. That would probably be really good to have pineapple chunks. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use this frozen pineapple juice. And like I said, I like to add a sneaky bit of sugar. So I found that sugar helps and you don't need much, just a little. So I'm gonna put about a teaspoon in here just to give it a little kick for that carbonation and I'm making a big mess, that's okay. Clean cooks aren't fun. <laughs> Good excuse for me. Okay, just a little. I think I'm gonna put a little more in this one. There we go, there. So that it has a little bit more that it can grab onto. I'm gonna add my ginger in. Spilling ginger all over the place too. Now you decide as you keep making flavors, you can change it up. Play with what flavors you think you like and depending on what you do, you can take note and say, mm, I like it a little bit sweeter or I like it a little bit more flavor or less flavor and you change that recipe up. Now I will link down below as well, the big book of kombucha that will give you guys some tips and lots of recipes to follow. A very helpful book. But even if you don't have the book or don't wanna buy the book, this is really um, kind of foolproof. It's so simple, it's amazing that it costs so much in the store. So now I'm gonna add my juice. Now for me, I don't like to fill too much because a little flavor does go a long way. And this is concentrated juice. So this is what my bottom looks like. Two uh, inch and a half to two inches. And that is plenty. Add a little bit more in this one. Now, right through this funnel, I will add my kombucha. I'm gonna stop right there only because I wanna make sure I even them out. Oops. Wonderful, now I can add more to the other one. There we go, la di da, and this is what's left at the bottom. I'm gonna add this to my big batch, no harm. Now, one thing you are gonna wanna do is leave a little bit of headroom because as this ferments, 
and you open this up, it's going to sizzle and bubble and all sorts of goodness, so you don't want it squirting all over you. I just gave it a good shake to get that sugar mixed in a little bit, but you're going to just sit this in your pantry for about three days. After three days, you can check to see what the ferment is like, and if you want to leave it longer, you can. So I will see you guys again in three days. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a word of caution. What happened to our other bottle, it was a square bottle. I had never used that bottle before. It was brand new, and let me just say that bottle did not hold up. So it burst in my entire pantry, and I have never had any kombucha bottles burst before. So one word of caution is, don't buy the square bottles I, for kombucha. I really believe those are just, at this point, just ornamental, you know, just for good looks. I don't think it has the strength that a circular bottle has, for one. And second thing that I did not know, I didn't know that they can compress so much once they get fermented to the point that they could explode. So we have a warm house. If you have a warm house above 75 degrees, go ahead and just release some gas every day or every couple days as needed and then you will not have the bottle bursting. I actually had to make a second batch because the one bottle bursted, the other bottle, it was great, it was fine. It just took uh, so long to clean up that my husband drank it and it had so much carbonation in it from just being too warm. So again, if your house is above 75 degrees, go ahead and release some gas every day or every other day. Our house can get up to about 86-ish degrees, so it's really warm where we're at. So go ahead, that's a word of caution with your kombucha. Now let's open this bottle and see what my compression is like in this one. As you can see, there's a lot of settlement at the bottom and that is completely fine. That's the pineapple juice. There's the ginger pieces and I have not let this open. I have not opened this one yet. It's been chilling in the fridge for almost a week actually and I've been saving it to record. So let's see. I always hate opening these. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Ooh, good, ah! And my sink is right there. So. Mm, that was a good one. Look at that, it didn't blow up on me, but holy smokes, a lot of fizz and carbonation. Mm, so good, um, it's so tasty, but I feel sad. Another word of caution. Mmm, I should have probably released a little bit more gas on this one. Boy, we've got some working kombuchas lately. So one thing, that you also want to keep in mind for your kombucha is you don't want to fill your bottles that big because of this head that you can possibly have. So if you're getting a lot of head like this, you're going to want to fill your bottles a little bit lower. So I'm going to just slowly release this <laughs> gas. Ah, some good kombucha. My house is really warm, so that might be it. It is still bubbling, still bubbling in there. Wow. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just sit this aside here. We don't waste any of that. I'm gonna drink that when it's done doing its, its jam. <laughs> I feel like I've got a science experiment going on here. It is incredible, it is incredible. Well, ladies, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope this was informational for you, and I hope it makes doing kombucha just sound so simple that you wanna try it. It's so simple, it's so delicious. We drink so much kombucha in our house, that's why I just had to learn how to do it. So I hope you try it out, and I hope you really like this recipe. Go ahead and let me now know down in the comments if you have tried this out and how yours turned out. But as always, stay positive, work hard, and God bless. Aloha.